he has some quotes and things, and, and I do want to get into this book in a second, but there's some things I want to get through first. He has, I'm going to call them ideas or quotes or whatever that I'm just going to read, and then we'll, we'll kind of pick them apart a little bit. Karate is the most zen-like of all the martial arts. It has abandoned the sword. This means that it transcends the idea of winning and losing to become a way of thinking and living for the sake of other people in accordance with the way of heaven. Its meanings, therefore, reach the profoundest levels of human thought. I see, and this is, you know, 40s and 50s or whatever when he's coming up with this stuff. So there was no UFC. There was no mixed martial arts. I see so many people on social media, someone will present a video of a teenager practicing a kata or technique. And there will be hundreds of comments of what look like grown men commenting that, well, that'll never work in a fight or try that on me or whatever. And, you know, you look at their profiles and it's like, you know, these are, these are like, I call them couch captains, you know, armchair quarterbacks at best. And if you truly, like kata aside, whatever, if you truly practice karate and you make it your life, it has profound results. Becoming a true martial artist has profound results in your humanhood. <laughs> than just being a a brute fighter your average mixed martial artist right they're only focusing on like one aspect of it you know i know it's martial arts there's the martial aspect and there's the art aspect and it the beauty is in combining the two if we only focus on one whatever side that is you're not you're not complete you're not you're not a real martial artist you have to you have to put the two together another one for a long time i have emphasized that karate is budo and if the budo is removed from karate it is nothing more than sport karate show karate or even fashion karate the idea of training merely to be fashionable so there you go that's sort of the one side of it right Karate is a lot of things. His karate is a lot of things. It is an art. It is a martial science. You know, it is fighting. It is self-defense. It is Zen. It is life. It is all those things. If you remove the one aspect that he is, you know, the testing, the Budo, like the, the, the warrior aspect of it, then... It is nothing more than sport or, you know, mental fashion, if you will. Credit that has discarded Budo has no substance. It is nothing more than a barbaric method of fighting or promotional tool for the purpose of profit. No matter how popular it becomes, it is meaningless. I think there's a lot of martial arts that find themselves in the same boat, whether it is the, you know, the McDojo that's, that's promoting, you know, kids to black belt for you know pay or whether it's the jujitsu studio that doesn't quite know where it fits in the world of martial arts so you know they're just sort of randomly promoting people based on whatever gut feeling someone has if you discard the warrior aspect the living life as a warrior budo then there is no actual substructure to it it is all just fighting. It is all just one dimensional. And I agree with him. At that point, it becomes meaningless. Uh, mind, body, spirit. Uh, he was alone on the mountain. Like I said, legend says he trained eight to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. There was no one there to push him or critique him. He was on his own. He had to find out who he truly was. To endure it physical training also trains your mind and spirit focus determination discipline are all parts of the puzzle 
when I was out for seven days, I didn't do one bit of karate other than we sparred for a little bit. But I was still practicing in terms of practicing my budo in that I would never give up on tasks that we were working on and I would support others in their tasks that they were working on. So when you think about him being on that mountain, it is not just about him showing off how tough he is. It is about him truly testing himself to become something he wants to become. Putting that puzzle together. Whether it's for himself or whether it's for the ultimate goal of bringing that back down to others remains to be seen, but I'm glad he did it. Simplify. If you study his, if you study Kyokushin karate, uh, you know, he believed in terms of katas. If you're a karate practitioner, you'll know what I'm talking about. But in terms of that, you'll, you know, if, if you live the lifestyle, you'll run into people that know 20, 30, 40 katas. But they're not necessarily really any good at all of them. And then you'll meet people that know 10 to 12 to 15 or whatever. And they're really good at them. So he leaned in that direction, removed, removing what he thought was extraneous, you know, techniques, katas, whatever. He removed what he thought was the fluff and he focused solely on those things, perfecting the basics within them. So why learn 12 different ways to throw a punch? Why not learn one or two and become really powerful with that one technique? and practice all the things around it. I tend to agree with that too.